Hey guys, it's Eric here at BMR Suspension again. I just wanted to go over a pinion angle real quick. I get a lot of questions on this, so I just wanted to make a demonstrational video showing how I like to set it up. Uh, it's really straightforward. A lot of people overcomplicate it, so I just want to show you the easiest way of going about this. The first thing we need to measure to compare our angles is get a driveline angle measurement on either the engine or the transmission. Uh, for access, I like to use the crank pulley because it's pretty easy to get to over the sway bar here. We just take our angle finder and go right across the front of the crank pulley balancer here. And in this particular case, I end up with five degrees. Now, your car doesn't have to be level when you measure this. The actual number of the angle doesn't matter. It's the relation of the front angle to the rear end angle is what you're looking for. When you hear people talk about negative two, negative three, stuff like that, it's not actually the rear end pointing down negative two degrees or three degrees. It's two degrees less than what the driveline angle is. So in this case, when we found our five degrees here, we subtract two degrees from that, we end up with three degrees. So we're gonna be looking for three degrees at our rear end. For our second measurement now, we'll be measuring right at the rear end. You can actually go right off the flat plate to the bottom of the torque arm. And with our magnetic angle finder, it will actually stick right to the bottom of it and hold itself in place. Now we measured five degrees at our engine and we're going to target for a negative two degree pinion angle on this setup. So we're actually going to be looking for a total of three degrees at the rear end. Right now, our rear end is measuring exactly zero, so we need to rotate the rear end up three degrees. I've already got our jam nuts loose on our adjuster, so now we're using a one inch wrench. I'll put it on the adjuster and just rotate this. So now I'm going to turn our adjuster until we get a total of three degrees. That's good there. That's three degrees. Okay, now that we've got our rear end angle where we wanted it, all we have to do is lock down the jam nuts on the adjuster and you're all done. Remember, pinion angle is not going to affect how the car launches. Pinion angle only comes into play for driveline vibration issues. If you're not having any vibration issues, don't mess with your pinion angle, it's not going to change it. If the car's not hooking, don't change your pinion angle, it's not going to help. However, if you do change the torque arm mounting position, lower control arm mounting position, any other geometry changes on the rear end, you at least need to check your pinion angle because chances are it will change. Uh, it may only change a small amount, but either way, it's worth it to check it. And as easy as this is to adjust and change, it's worth it. Also, if you change the ride height of your car, your pinion angle is going to change. If you lower the car, if you raise it, if you have coilovers, you make an adjustment, anytime you adjust the ride height of the car, your pinion angle is most likely going to change. So be sure to check it after you make any changes like that. Now, a lot of people ask me all the time, what, do, what should my drive shaft measure? Where do I measure on the drive shaft? What should that? Don't worry about it. Don't even measure your drive shaft. If you do it this way, that's really all you need. Drive shaft's not gonna matter. So just measure the engine, measure the rear end, uh, subtract your angles out, and that's all you gotta do. That's no more math. There's no subtracting, multiplying, any of the other crazy stuff you have to do with the drive shaft. Just straight subtract two degrees from your engine, and you're good to go. Now, a lot of people also ask me where their pinion angle should be for their setup. Uh, the answer is really simple. If you're running a polyurethane bushing in your lower control arm, uh, you should be between two and three degrees. If you're running a rubber, like a stock lower control arm like this, you're gonna be closer to three degrees. If you're running a rod end control arm and like a solid mounted torque arm, uh, you can actually go between one and zero degrees. The idea of the pinion angle preload is actually to anticipate rear end reaction under hard acceleration. And the idea is under hard acceleration, you want the angle between the rear end center line and the drive line center line to be perfectly parallel so that they have equal working angles on your U-joints. Uh, the negative two degrees just allows for the rear end to roll up approximately two degrees and that should put you about in line where everything should line up perfectly. So hopefully that clears some things up about pinion angle and makes you more confident about setting yours. If you have any other questions, call me here at the office and I'll explain it a little more in depth, but this should pretty well cover everything. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.